Hey everybody, welcome to Away Games, a Chicago Cubs podcast. My name's Kevin McCaffrey, and I'm going to be joined by your good friend Adam Mamawala in just a minute here. We're also going to be joined by uh, our new friend Ethan Roberts. If you don't know Ethan, he is a relief pitching prospect for the Chicago Cubs. Uh, he's currently, as we release this episode on Friday, he is at Triple A Iowa at the moment, but he's been moving really quickly, so that could change any time, really. Uh, Ethan's a really, really exciting pitching prospect, and uh, he was a really fun guy to talk to. Uh, he's got some great stories you're going to want to hear, and uh, we're psyched he could join us. And we're also psyched that this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. If you don't know Manscaped, maybe you don't listen to a lot of podcasts. Uh, I feel like you're hearing a lot about them lately. What Manscaped does is they give you products to keep all your hair in order. It keeps you groomed. Uh, the Lawnmower 4.0 is the newest piece of technology in the manscaping business, and Manscaped has it. And it Guess what? If you use the promo code AWAYGAMES, you can get 20% off any order and free shipping anywhere, and you help keep our show going. So Manscaped, promo code AWAYGAMES. And without any further ado, let's get to a man who is absolutely mowing down hitters. Uh, how about that for a tie-in? Lawnmower 5.0, mowing down hitters in Iowa right now. This is Ethan Roberts. What's up, man? How you What's doing? What's up? Y'all doing good? Hey, yeah. how's it going, Ethan? I'm Kevin. Nice to uh, meet you. Nice to meet you guys. You, you're outside the Colts stadium right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. We got going straight Bo Jackson. Are you going into yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to go, go get a two-sport deal here? What's happening? Oh, I'd, I'd be a little too scared for that. <laughs> I think that's I think that's smart. This is a what yeah. a what a what a perfect uh sporting background. Is this are you playing uh I guess you guys are playing in Indianapolis this week? Indy, now. yeah, yeah, yep. Nice. We just got in last night. That's cool. Is this uh have you been have you been to Indianapolis before? I haven't. I haven't. I just me and uh my roommate Gomez just went down to the uh downtown like the circle where the fountains uh-huh. and stuff are down there. Awesome. Super nice. Cool. We just went down there and got some breakfast. That's but. perfect. Who's the Who's the roommate? You said Juan Gomez. Okay. Yeah. Another uh, Another relief pitcher, right? Yeah. Ninety eight bowling ball sinkers. Oh man, <laughs> a free scouting report. That is. I feel like I don't. Uh, I don't know how much Adam told you. Uh, told you beforehand, but we're not. We're not journalists. We're comedians. We're Cubs fans. Who Heck do, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who do uh, who do a podcast? It would be Adam. We should start introducing our comedian friends with a scouting report to go along. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> you know, just the like the amount of times I've had to be uh, rooming with a comedian on the road when I don't want to. Just <laughs> yeah, I've, I I we I think we've both not as much anymore as we used to, but we used to room with some real thirty grade comics uh, for <laughs> <laughs> for in our early years. Um, but That's yeah. Thank, Thanks so much for for joining us, Ethan. Dude, yeah, for sure. Anytime, man. Um, so you've been, I mean, you've been all over the place this year, but also in in just a just a couple of years, you're 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 at your fourth stop along the uh, the Cubs minor league chain here. Yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, I mean, that's honestly the plan that everybody wants to wants to follow. I've been blessed, man. Um, I, uh, I got there in 18, spent a couple weeks in Arizona, went to Eugene and that was off. That was after coming off throwing like 80, almost 80 innings out of the college. That was hanging. Man, I was going to say, look, looking up, uh, your college stats. And I, I remember around the time of the draft seeing this, but you, you led the team in saves your junior year, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. But you threw about 80 innings. Were you, I mean, that's straight. <laughs> It was like it was like three, four inning saves. <laughs> that is straight like goose gossage seventies nonsense. Yeah. That is you're probably uh, you're probably getting those weird saves where it's like your team is up by fifteen, but you've pitched long enough to somehow qualify right, for a save. Yeah, for that sure. like weird yeah. technicality. Ab- yeah. Absolutely. And you're exactly right because that team also hit 133 home runs that year. Woo! It, so <laughs> in were you responsible many? for any of those? <laughs> no, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> that's yeah so tell, tell us about your your college experience a little bit you went to tennessee tech right yeah i so i went to a little high school in a little town called sparta tennessee um white county high school and tech was like 30 minutes north of, of my house okay it's the county right north of there and i was literally like that was my only offer i had out of high school and i got it on my 
you know how like schools will do their little prospect camps? Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. So I did that three years in a row at Tech. And they finally sent me an offer on the third time I was there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so you got you basically you had a semester's worth of credits up there, uh basically already. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that that happened and I mean they they made me an offer and I wasn't going to have to pay much to go to school because it was in-state. I was super close. It's a cheap school anyway. So I went there, and um, I, had, I had a great time there, man. Like, my coach there, his name's Matt Braga. He actually uh, left my last year and went to coach at Rice, and they just let him go at Rice, and now he's, uh, like, an assistant at Auburn. Okay. But, oh, nice. man, he's, like, the, he's one of the best coaches I've ever had in my life. He's, yeah. he's awesome. Yeah, I mean that's that's a run of uh, a run of powerhouse baseball schools too. Uh, right. After that, um, and you guys, so what do you what do you think? You said this was your this was your only offer or your only D one offer coming out of high school? That was, no, that was my only one. Only one. <laughs> well, I, I was reading. I mean, it sounded like you you had kind of like a late growth spurt. Like, was that part of it? Um, I I think I kind of bloomed late. I mean, I'm still five nine, but I think I kind of yeah. bloomed late. I guess as a, as a player. Um, mm-hmm. I wasn't throwing. I mean, I was probably in high school. I was probably throwing eighty six. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I got to I got to tech, and I ended up, you know, low nineties. And then now, uh, after this COVID season, I'm four to five now. So, yeah, we've I saw some of the uh, some of the Twitter videos with uh, with the the velocity and and the uh, yeah. the insane spin numbers you got going on too. <laughs> yeah, the I mean, yeah, not spinning it. You keep spinning it, absolutely, and keep physically spinning it too. I feel like one of the one of the minor league clips I saw the most get passed around Cubs Twitter was you closing a save and then ending with a physical spin. Is this now? Was that the only time that's happened, or is that an Ethan uh, Roberts signature move? So I think, if I remember right, I mean in the heat of the moment you don't really remember what happens, but sure. Um, I think I think the one time I did it was the the night on July Fourth when I got. Uh, it was a save, and that was which is your birthday, is it that not? Was my birthday, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, it was it was a cool night to pitch. All my family was there because when I was in Double A, I was two hours from home. So. Right, because it's in Knoxville, yeah. right? Right. So I mean, it was that was that was super fun. Got some got some juices flowing, but that's that's, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. I want to I want to see like a, a pitching ninja breakdown of the spin rate of your actual spin after <laughs> getting the save. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I one mean, one and if, a half rotations. <laughs> If you get one and a half rotations is pretty solid coming off the mound on one hop. That's, I mean, that's still pretty elite numbers, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah but I mean, like you, so you gave, uh, you, you gave the, the scouting report on, on your lovely roommate. Uh, how, what yeah. is the, what is the Ethan Roberts scouting report? Cause we're talking about spin numbers and truly that is one of the things you, right. is your spin numbers look crazy. Yeah. I mean, I just, honestly, um, I spun it like this for a long time and I never really had um, equipment to, 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 to read it. Sure. Um, I mean, it was like coaches around when I was in high school. It was like, how are our kids not hitting? How are our kids not hitting? And it was because I was throwing 84 mile an hour cutters at 2,800 spent. Right. <laughs> in my junior year of high school. Um, and nobody ever knew. I mean, I was just, I just never threw honestly anything other than fastball in high school um well you probably wouldn't have to i assume at that, at, right, at that yeah. point right like right. well and i but, admit, like oh, that ahead, that um when once i once i first started because me i mean even at, even at tennessee tech like we didn't have a set pitching coach like my head coach was my pitching coach for my first year for sure and then um Kyle Wright's older brother, um, Mitchell Wright is his name. He came on as a pitching coach. And but we didn't really have we didn't we never got on Rapsodo. We never got on track, man. We never got on anything unless we played at like Vanderbilt. Right, right. And uh the last time the last time we played at Vanderbilt, like I don't get to see the numbers because it's off of their track man. But it was going all over like Twitter and stuff that was like Ethan Roberts just threw a three thousand RPM cutter. And we've never seen that in this or in their in their stadium or whatever before and i was like okay well i don't really know what that means but that's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, yeah, right yeah. I had no idea. yeah 
I, I want I want to be clear, Ethan, that I'm not accusing you of anything, but I'm genuinely curious because I don't know the answer to this. What is the protocol in the minors right now in terms of checking pitchers when they come off the mound? Like, is it exactly the same as the majors? Like, do you have to do the for whole sure? Yeah, hat and glove do, and all that? yeah, they'll do hat glove. They run their hands around your glove and your finger holes of your glove. Everything. You turn your belt over. Turn the sides of your pants over, and all that stuff. Yeah. That's a yeah, some intimate umpiring going on uh, this year. <laughs> they gently, they gently so, stroke your cheek ever so. Ever right. so often. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a I've got a good one on one of my teammates, uh, uh, Joe Biagini. Yeah. If you he's awesome. He's one of the funniest dudes I've ever met. But so he, <laughs> he's getting checked the other day, like a week or two ago, and he comes up to the umpire and grabs the umpire's hat and starts looking at it and puts it back <laughs> on his head. <laughs> I mean, that seems fair. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> we yeah, I think anytime, anytime an umpire no blows an obvious call, someone should go check his hat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> What's he got going on in there? Yeah, exactly. This can't be natural. This is yeah. uh, this is something else. I mean, for you watching, uh, like obviously, like you said, you 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 weren't getting a ton of attention, even though you've been getting people out the whole time. When you started seeing the spin rates, when that's was that. Was it sort of like an aha moment for you or was it just kind of like frustrating coming up for you where it's like sort of like you said, people were saying we don't know how he's getting people out at this rate. I mean, that has to be frustrating to have the, a level of success that no one's buying, that just no one believes <laughs> for other reasons, you know? <laughs> right. Well, um, honestly, it was more of like the aha moment for me because it's like, OK, I understand how to use this now. Right. Um, like for example, I struggled a couple times here early and lear I've learned more in my short time here in, in AAA than I have honestly my entire career. Honestly. Just how wow. to pitch with what I have. Use use what I have to get dudes out. And I mean, we've got guys here that help every single person every single day to figure out what you gotta throw in certain counts against a certain hitter who does this, you know what stuff like that. This is boring stuff. But <laughs> just knowing what to do and use stuff to your strengths, you know what I mean? And knowing how your stuff plays. Yeah. And I mean, is that, do you think that's because, is that because of the the coaching staff that's, that's different at, at AAA or is it because of the caliber of player you're both like teaming up with and going against? Right. I would say, I would say it's more the level of competition and stuff because mm -hmm. you get punished more here. Right. There was stuff like I was, I was pitching in one of my, one of my outings, I got like four hits in the room. And it was actually against Indy at home. And I was like, that wouldn't happen if I was pitching double. What just happened? And then <laughs> right. you go back and watch. And it's like, I would get away with that one. <laughs> okay, but let me go back and see what I could have done different. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, um, I imagine now, that at whatever level, like, you know, you might get away with a hanging slider in South Carolina. Right. You're not going to get away with that. No chance. Iowa. They will yeah. absolutely punish it. And I'll tell you what, Bobby Witt's good at punishing mistakes. Ooh. He – yeah, you. So you. Uh, I mean, Bobby Witt. For people who who maybe don't don't know as much, a uh, uh, very top level prospect playing with the Royals uh, organization. So yeah, you had you yeah, had some trouble just, with him. We just got done facing him. Um, I had been going like cutters and sliders away, and I got it. I faced him three times, and I got it. Like he grounded out once or twice, maybe a fly out. I can't remember, but. The last time I faced him, I was like, I'm going to dump a curveball over. He hasn't seen it yet. And he put it off the wall. And I was like, sick. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> tough. That could have been worse. Could have been over the wall. Yeah. Yeah, right. I got lucky. <laughs> but, yeah, he, he will he will exploit mistakes for sure. I mean, it was like a middle but down strike. Just absolutely yeah. slammed it. I was like, okay, well, you're good. <laughs> well, I feel like we've, we've, right. we've talked to hype. a lot of pitchers. And, and one of the things we ask people is like, is there anyone that you came up like patterning yourself after or like, do you have any comps for, you know, guys in the majors that you think you're most similar to stuff wise? Um, stuff wise, my fastball, if I could throw it like he does, like harder, my fastball plays a little bit like Kimball's, I think, where he's got like a low release. So I'm, my, my release is super low, but my spin's high and my extension's about the same as his. But if I threw, 99 to 100 it would be a comparable pitch but man I, might, I mean i might get there one day but the mm -hmm. way like we throw the way the spin is the way all that stuff is kind of my fastball kind of compares to his but also doesn't because he's a future hall of famer that throws 100 you know what i'm saying <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah but, but i think but, one, uh, yeah go ahead sorry one, one one player i mean that i've i've 
especially coming out of like high school and you know sort of being counted out at some point in my career i i enjoy uh some of the things that marcus stroman does uh marcus stroman is is one of the guys i i I myself look up to as a player i mean there's some stuff that i'm like okay dude you probably shouldn't have said that but (laughs) yeah he's he's a a great twitter follow yeah 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 Yeah. (laughs) but i mean i love his height doesn't measure heart movement i love all that stuff so he's he's one guy that i for sure look up to and then I'm assuming you you modeled the uh, glasses off of Joe Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm just blind. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very relief pitcher look. I don't know. There's something is, about yeah, those specific sure. glasses that are very yeah. Very relief so I was I, like I was in Eugene, and uh, in high in uh, in college. Sorry, we would always just do touches. Made it super easy. And so because I was blind, basically. <laughs> so I get to Eugene and. Uh, I can't remember the, the the young guy's name. He was my catcher, Hispanic guy. He comes back, goes back there, calls fastball, and I'm like, "Hey, man, I can't see." He comes out there and he doesn't speak a lick of English. <laughs> I'm like, "Oh no." Do you speak any Spanish? Uh, I'm learning some, but I mean, it's just very, very, very little. Right. <laughs> but so I'm t- I'm trying to talk to him, and uh, we're in Boise, Idaho. It's my first time out in Eugene. I flew and met the team in Boise. And uh, he's like, I was like, you're going to have to go like, you know, face for fastball, you know, left this leg for this, whatever. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. And he goes back there again. He goes, <laughs> I was like, man, I can't see it. I call him back out again. I'm like, hey, man, we got to. And the first baseman comes over and starts trying to, you know, decipher what everybody's saying. Pitching coach comes out. We finally get it figured out. And I went the whole first inning of my career, and this was fastball, and this is all I got. <laughs> you got a, you got the, uh, the <laughs> if people aren't watching the video, it's sort of the uh, the John Cena, you can't see yeah, me. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a little bit of the, uh, so, just the full I mean, I went, through, I went through my first whole inning of my career of throwing fastballs, and they knew it was coming. <laughs> so it was kind of tough. <laughs> That's great. I also think it's kind of, from a hitter's perspective, it is a little intimidating to hear a pitcher just be like, I'm blind. I can't, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right. like that, uh, this one might be at my chin, so. <laughs> yeah, if there's mid-90s coming in blind, I feel like oh, that's so. that's not a comfortable at bat for anybody. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's uh, that's why I had to get the glasses. Well, and talk and glasses wise, obviously, uh, the the first reliever I thought of uh, with the glasses is uh, is Ricky Vaughn uh, specifically. Oh yeah. So it's a little bit of an updated, you know, that's an updated Ricky Wild Thing Vaughn yeah. look too, which is ve- which is perfect for a reliever. For sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, when you see a reliever with glasses, they got a little something they do different, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And and speaking of uh, Vaughn, do you do you have currently a uh, a walkout song that you have chosen? I guess I don't know. Do you get to choose right. your own? Yeah, in yeah, the you do, yeah. You do. Cool. Um, so I haven't I haven't gotten to put it into effect here yet because mm-hmm. I haven't went up there and told them. <laughs> but when I was in double, <laughs> we'll shoot I him a note. Yeah. Use, yeah. So yeah. I always use um Shine by Mike Studd and Marcus Stroman. They made a song together. Oh really? I yeah. Mean, it's called Shine. So, oh man. Super cool. Stroman's parts first. I get about a minute of it and pretty cool is he does, rapping singing what is he doing yeah, yeah rapping that's awesome does pretty stroman good. know you use it have you have you have you uh, let him know no, I've, i reached out to him a couple of times he hooked me back a couple of times sometimes he won't but um no he doesn't know i use the song <laughs> i mean that's pretty good i'm trying to think if there's anyone else in the majors who could both come up to a song and then have someone else come up to their song right, i feel yeah. like <laughs> I mean, maybe Deion Sanders back in the day, he yeah. had like a rap album uh, right. <laughs> at some point, maybe. That's, That's hilarious. So of the guys at, uh, at AAA, who, like, who do you hang around with the most, like in terms of both just like having fun and also uh, like picking right. their brain? Um, so uh, I've been hanging around a lot with obviously Juan. Juan, uh, we've been together pretty much all year, AA and AA and AAA. Um, Ryan Kellogg. So yeah. Ryan, Ryan Kellogg's been everywhere. Yeah. Been everywhere. He's he been was... triple A, double A, <laughs> everywhere. Um, and then he went and played with Team Canada and all that stuff. Um, 
But I've I've picked my pick some pick some people's brain like uh, Efros who just got called up, mm-hmm. just on this, just on where to be at mentally, and he's 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 one of the best teammates honestly I've ever had, and he's helped me a ton, just at this level. Because like after I had a rough one, he was like he was like, look, bro, everything evens out, you're fine, you'll get two or three that are just gonna roll together under your belt, you'll be fine. They just you know. Reiterating positive stuff. Great teammate. Helped me mentally. And uh, that's honestly, that's honestly to me the biggest difference. Like your stuff isn't going to change a whole lot at this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just got to be locked in and, and be disciplined and be consistent. If you're consistent, if you're honestly what I've heard a ton, if you're consistent, you're a big leaguer. If you're not, you're in football. Right, you got to be right. consistent. Yeah, it's it's sort yeah. of like what you, what you mentioned about the the pitch. That's like a slight mistake that you that you were saying right. one level ago. That's not a problem, and right. now it's it's bouncing off walls and stuff. And that's very cool to hear about uh, Scott Efros too, because I mean, that's you know you don't. I feel like you heard more and you saw more people talking about what a good guy and good teammate he was as soon as he got yeah. called up. It was cool to see like people be excited for someone else to get right. that call. You know. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't think of anybody else better, honestly, to get to get a chance. Of, man, he's he's literally like an eighty grade teammate, eighty grade friend, eighty grade guy. He's awesome. That's awesome. I was pumped for him. And you and so you, as we said, you've you've bumped uh, in in a short period of time. You're drafted twenty eighteen uh, in the mm-hmm. fourth round, and then you've hit every level, and you're now at at Triple A. When you're getting called up level to level. How far in advance do you see it coming? Is it something the team tells you, like there, there's these things you have to check off and then we see you being at the next level b- by a certain time? Or is it like totally um, a surprise when you get the call? Totally a surprise. Every time. Really? Yeah. So my first time, um, I, I spent the whole first year in Eugene and I went to South Bend. And the first time I moved from South Bend to Myrtle, we were on the road in Dayton. And uh, I had just thrown like, I think two days before. And I show up in the clubhouse, and uh, my pitching coach is like, hey, Skip wants to talk to you. And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> you know? Sure. And then he goes in there, and he's like, hey, you got a flight at 6. Thanks for everything while you were here, you know. You can leave. Go to Myrtle. And then I started this year in A, And then uh, – so when I was in A, I would go home every Sunday night after the game and spend all Monday at home since I was two hours away. And so, I mean, I had pitched that week, done f- – I gave up – I think I gave up a run the week before, and, like, I was still working on trying to throw my slider a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. And I had a decent outing that week, and I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go home and come back. We got to go on the road. We were about to go to Montgomery. And uh, so I went – I was at home, out to eat, um, and my my manager calls me, and he's like, hey, uh, you're going to leave for Iowa today or tomorrow. And I was like, uh – Okay, well, I guess I'll drive back and get all my stuff tomorrow. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had just gotten home. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so that Monday, I had to drive all the way back to Knoxville, get my stuff off from the field, get my stuff uh, from where I was staying. I was actually staying in a camper in nice. Dubai. Pretty sick. Yeah, it is but pretty so sick. I was, <laughs> you I got, was, the, got uh, the minor league and, life and, figured out. Yeah, me and uh, Wyatt Short were in a camper together on the lake. Not bad. Not bad at all. So I got, <laughs> I got all my stuff from there and got on a flight. I went back home and then flew out of Nashville up here. So yeah, it's super, super spur of the moment type stuff. I mean, they probably have a plan, but they don't really tell you what's up. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, it's 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 just like a weird thing to think of in your life to be getting like surprise promotions at any job, right, yeah. but also surprise you're moving and in your case, right, yeah. surprise you're like leaving home. You know, yeah, is uh, for sure. Yeah, and my first my first one, my my wife was in South Bend. We had our apartment together, and I was on the road in Dayton. I called her and I was like, "Hey, I got a flight this morning," and she's like, "Dude, what?" And I was like, "Yeah, babe, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to pack up the apartment. You need to go back to." probably have to go back to Tennessee for a couple weeks and then come out and meet me. And she was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> my son was, my son was, how old would he have been at that time? Like maybe six months, four okay. months. Oh my months, God. Something like that. So yeah. she had him too. And I was like, Oh no. So, I mean, my parents and her parents have been a blessing in that regard. They went up there and helped her pack and moved her back. So crazy. Oh, that's that's great. great. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, 
baseball player spouses deserve some sort of medal for the amount no of patience joke, that they dude. have to have. Rock stars. Unreal. Yeah. Absolutely. I, don't know but I mean, do yeah, talking about obviously getting kind of bumped up from level to level and now being at the highest level you can be in the minors, like the Cubs, probably more than any other team in baseball, did a ton at the trade deadline. So they went from right. having one of the best bullpens in baseball to all of those guys being gone. So how much are you paying attention to that? Not even like rooting for anything in particular, but like just realistically right. knowing that your route to the majors may have gotten easier because of what the big league team is doing. Yeah. And that, I mean, and that all depends on what happens in this off season too. Right. Um, like they also could go sign a ton of dudes. They could, you know, you never know. And I mean, this is my, I'm rule five eligible this year. So it's going to be, kind of a crazy off season for me. Um, as of right now, I'm just trying to kind of stay where my feet are and gain experience here, honestly. Um, yeah. I just want to, I just want to be the best me I can be for the rest of the year, no matter if I'm here or if I am in the big leagues. I don't know. Yeah. I just want to be the best me I can be. And I mean, like I said, this off season is going to be kind of crazy. They got, you know, a lot of decisions to make. Um, so we'll see how it goes. It's well, be and crazy. And you mentioned uh, Rule 5 eligible. Can you tell people basically what that means for yeah. for you if they don't know? Right. So um, Rule 5 draft uh, happens in the offseason. And it's like so I'm in my technically fifth season, I guess. Right. Even though one and, didn't exist, but yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, I go through this little portal called the Rule 5 draft. And to be protected, there's a minor league and a major league side. To be protected on the uh, minor league side, you have to be in AAA. So I'm protected on that side. But to be protected in the big league side for the team to keep control of you, they have to put you on the 40-man roster. And if they don't, then teams have the opportunity to bring you on and bring you to, you know, their big league spring training and give you a shot for their roster. And then ultimately they keep you. If they pick you, they keep you. That's cool. I mean, you're probably in the big leagues with them. If not, they send you back to your team. Right. So – yeah. So in that, in that instance, I mean, it's like, you, you know, I think if you're in a team, uh, if you, if you're on a team where you're, it's basically stacked at whatever position you're at, it seems like right. it can be a nice way to give, to get people out of a log jam in that situation. Right. If like, you're good enough to pitch at the major league level, but it's just like, you know, a piled right. up line in front of you somewhere else. Um, but yes, I mean, it seems like you either go, you either go to the 40 man and you're that, that much closer to the majors or you're straight up getting a shot at the majors somewhere else. That's right, an ex- yeah, it was, exciting time. Right. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be something else, man. Like I told my, I told my dad, my dad's been right there with me my whole career. And I told him before I left this year, I was like, this is going to be probably the biggest year of my career. You know that, right? He was like, yeah, I know. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a dad. Yeah. He gets he gets more nervous than I do, man. <laughs> right. Almost like if he doesn't mention it to you, maybe you won't know. Maybe, yeah, you, know, maybe yeah. you won't get nervous about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, we, he's, uh, we have he's to. He's good, man. He's yeah. been right there with me. That's great. I mean, that's so huge. You know, I feel like having having yeah. support, whether it's from your parents or your you know wife or whoever, like it's right. hard enough as it is to have that you know, have people backing you. I feel like it's huge. No joke. And you're exactly right. Yeah. But uh, we we've asked every pitcher that we've had on and it's been a lot of pitchers. Uh, I got to ask if you can hit because Justin Steele claims that he can rake. We haven't seen it at the major league level yet, but he was talking about his, his rap Soto numbers. He's like, yeah, I got like 430 off the bat one one Oh five exit Velo. So (laughs) I saw that. I saw that one. <laughs> there we go. This is see now. Now it's been corroborated by another source. It can be printed in a newspaper now. This yeah, is right official field, news. Right field bomb MVP. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I, last time I swung a bat, I was in high school. Yeah. Um, I was facing seventy-five mile an hour BP fastballs in high school, <laughs> so that right. was easier for me. I hit like four hundred. So see, I yeah, mean, that, high school. This is yeah. almost like. Oh, is this dude really talking about high school? But no, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could hit these guys up here, bro. Oh my goodness! Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> these it's guys like, are good. Yeah, and if you're if you're a, a reliever, it really if if you're being asked to hit something oh, has yeah. gone nuts at this point. Absolutely crazy. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was uh, talking to uh, one of the guys that just got up from came up from Double A, Luis Lugo. I've been playing with him all year in Double A and stuff, and uh, he just got here and made a couple starts. 
he was like, I get to hit an indie, right? And I was like, heck yeah, you do. And he was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he, a lot of, a lot of starters get pumped to hit. So it's pretty cool. Oh, sure. Yeah. I'm sure it's an exciting thing to, you know, it's, it's oh, sort yeah. of a, it's sort of a no lose proposition because no one's expecting right. you to do whatever, you know, anything yeah. for to, everything's a bonus at this point. You yeah. know, you don't have to go show. Hey, week, my first week up here, we won a game two to one and still had two RBS. Like, holy cow. <laughs> that's beautiful Crazy. uh I, w- I wanted right. to ask you so you got a uh you got a tattoo on your non-pitching arm is there a story behind the tattoo um so it's kind of a cluster of everything together okay um so i have a cow skull on the inside of my forearm and that's uh in remembrance of my grandfather we took care of beef cattle raised beef cattle together um all the way up i was I think I was 12 or 13 when he passed away. Um, so that one's for him. Um, on the inside of my forearm, I have like a mechanical looking Mustang, like a, like a, like a Ford Mustang, but it's just the horse. Nice. And that one is kind of in remembrance of uh, my wife's grandfather. He, uh, he passed away with cancer, I want to say like six, six, five, six years ago, something like that. It was when I was in college, and uh, he had a n- anniversary model Mustang that was like a ninety-something model. And he was like, "I want to keep this in the family because he he took it to shows, he took it to Bristol, he took it everywhere." Oh man! And he was like, "I want to keep this in the family. Does anybody does anybody want to buy it from me?" And I was like, "Me, I'll take it." <laughs> <laughs> so I, I ended up buying that off of him, and we, you know, every time we'd meet, we'd talk about you know cars and stuff like that. It was just you know, a cool way for us to bond. So I got that kind of in remembrance of him. And then my one of my most important ones to me is I have two tiger lilies um, on like kind of the middle outside of my arm. And that one's for my great grandmother. Um, she was arguably my best friend growing up. She was awesome. Um, she passed away when she was 96. And this was her favorite flower. And it was kind of what we had, you know, for the service and stuff. And, uh, my grandma still to this day every year she sends me pictures of Granny's tiger lilies blooming every year. Oh, that's that's so great! That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So, and then I think the last biggest one I have on here is just a big eagle with a with a TTU chain on it. <laughs> with the, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, which speaks for itself. I think yeah, is, right. <laughs> yeah, I love. I also love the idea that a guy who grew up like herding cattle is now literally in a bullpen. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Also just being like born on the fourth of July with Mustangs and an eagle on you. This is aggressively American stuff. This is so... Watch out. Watch out. <laughs> I mean he's doing this interview in front of a football stadium. I don't know how much. That's more true you can, too. Yeah, yeah sorry about it. No, that's <laughs> no, perfect. <laughs> yeah, we love it. That's great, man. Uh, well, we won't we but... won't keep you too long. One one thing we've been asking people uh is yeah what they did last year during quarantine, like both in terms of staying ready baseball wise and also yeah. just like staying sane. So where I was at in Tennessee, um, super small town, like in city limits, there's like 5,000 people. So I didn't see much of like, you know, you need to do this. You need to do that rules type of thing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I was given, I was given pitching lessons pretty much all year. Um, my plan is to eventually start a business with that and start like us, like an organization and a team with that. But I was given lessons um, pretty much all year. Um, I went, so my, my stepmom's brother owns a uh, shop that makes molds for companies to make parts and stuff for machines mm-hmm. and like plastic pieces. And so he owns like, there's three or four welders in there. So in the morning, early in the morning, I would get up and go work with him for a few hours a day welding. And then I would take care of my business and then I would give my lessons. So that's pretty much what I was doing, doing all year. Um, there were a few, a few weeks I kind of stayed at home when it got a little crazy. Um, but I was mainly just, you know, I would go up there and he was teaching me how to weld, uh, pretty (laughs) much just hanging out up there. It was super cool. And then, um, I would take care of my business that I needed to take care of for me. And then I would do my, uh, I would do my lessons in the afternoon. 
That sounds like typical minor league uh, baseball player stuff. Have 14 <laughs> jobs, uh, have, yeah, have no like joke. three careers at the same time. And welding yeah. is like, that's a pretty serious side gig. It, it sounds like to me, I mean, you know, we're, we're comics. I, we're doing, we are not working with our hands, but. Dude, I had fun with it. And I've, yeah. I've been, I've been working. I mean, I work with my hands all the time. My dad, right. my dad's a carpenter. He can do some crazy cool stuff with wood. He installs cabinets uh, pretty much every day. So he's taught me a bunch about that and the, just learning the differences between how you manipulate wood and how you manipulate metal is super cool to me because I've been doing it all my life. But he kind of taught me how to weld and met some awesome dudes up there and had fun with it. It was pretty cool. That's great. Now you can go out, you can break some bats and then send That's these right. guys to your dad, <laughs> yeah. like sort of keep the business in the yeah. family, ha have them yeah. uh, fix them up. You turn these guys some more bats, Dad. Sorry, yeah. I broke them off. <laughs> <laughs> I, the last uh, last question I had down yep. for you was, uh, I thought it was, there's a couple really cool stories that, uh, that we saw uh, going around about you on Twitter. One person was showing you staying after the game. I think it might've even been on your birthday or around then uh, signing autographs on the field uh after yeah. the game and uh and then another one uh cubs writer evan altman uh did, wrote in a piece about how you sent his daughter who was going through some medical things uh like yeah. an autograph card reached out and stuff so it seems it seems to me that you've taken like sort of taken some initiative in terms of like connecting with fans in a way you don't see everybody do so a yeah. i just wanted to ask like what you know is that something that's always kind of been a part of your game and your life and b like do you have a favorite fan interaction from from your time in the minors so um for me man like i've heard i mean everybody's heard it but it's like for me what sticks out to me is like one day nobody's gonna want that thing nobody's gonna want that autograph and there was a day when nobody wanted it so I, if, if somebody wants me to do something for them, I'm going to do it. And even if they don't want it, I'm going to go out of my way and try and do something for them. Um, honestly, sports wouldn't be where they are without fans. So any way you can give back to the fans is huge, in my opinion. Um, I mean, that's basically the way teams go about their business and, and earn, their, earn their living is, is the fans that are sitting in the seats. And when you hear people yelling your name, like I had, I mean, I was close to home. So I had, you know, there was one right. night this, this, my, one of my church groups came and I was coming into this double A game and it was, I mean, stadium was pretty full, but it wasn't like pack pack. And all you heard was, e -th, e -th. <laughs> and it's like, okay, all you guys came, made me feel awesome out there. Yeah. I'm staying after the game and I'm doing whatever you want me to do. You know what oh, I mean? That's great. Yeah, absolutely. You're getting the, the but, you're getting the Hulk Hogan intro, the WWE was, like baby yeah, face. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, yeah, I'll do, I'll go honestly above and beyond for, 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 for fans, man. It's, it's one thing that I always, I always have taken a little bit of pride in. Like when I was in college, our games were free. And our coach would let fans out onto the field after the game. And, I mean, we were like everybody in the state. I mean, there wasn't many people there, but were, everybody in the stadium was, was, was friends. And um, all the kids would come out and be like, oh, man, you know, it's crazy to stand right by you. I just saw you hit a home run or <laughs> crazy to stand by you. I just saw you strike out the last guy, or, you know, whatever. And um, it's just it's just a different – it's a different feeling whenever you can, like you sign a ball and you give it back to them and they're like, thank you. You know, like it's just like, oh, <laughs> right. cow. Why does this mean so much to you? But I'm glad it does. You know? <laughs> right. It, right. It's and so it's a cool. thing. It, yeah. We, we've all been like fans at some point that where it right. did mean something, but it is. And it's a thing, you know, I think Adam and I have experienced yeah. a, a in a different way. But <laughs> when you're the one that people want, like, are excited yeah. to see or want something from, it seems fake in some way. It's like, right. how did this, yeah. it, you know, it's like, I remember being yeah. the person who wanted that. But now if you are right. that person, it's like, well, this seems this seems like a dream kind of, you know. Right. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Um, yeah. And I'd say, like, the one the one that sticks out to me, um, there, I was in double A. And. I play when I was when we were playing at Tech. We were playing uh, in a super against Texas, and this lady, she she knew me because her her husband was from kind of around where I was at, where I'm from, mm -hmm. and um, 
she was talking to me and she said, when you, she, she met me after the game and she was like, I want to introduce myself and I don't want to seem like a crazy fan, but I want to talk to you for a second. I was like, no problem. I mean, I'll do what, 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 what. <laughs> And she's like, so I just got to tell you a story about how your career has impacted my family. And I was like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> I'm sorry, I blew that she, save. I wasn't trying. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I no, bet one hundred thousand dollars that you would <laughs> yeah. win. <laughs> Darn. Yeah. So when she starts talking, she starts telling me about about her father and how he was. I mean, in the hospital, ICU, almost like like pretty much, you know, on his deathbed, and uh, he was watching. He, he had watched this all year. We had had a great season at Tech. It was my last year there. And uh, he had watched me pitch almost every time. He was he was just super sick, and she was she was there with him almost every day. And she said, "The last game that you threw uh, at Texas, you walked off the field, and he said that kid's going to be something special." And the next day, he had he passed away. Wow, oh, man! And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Yeah. I mean, it just, it, that was that was the that was the not honestly not bad word for it, but not the craziest, but the most touching interaction I've ever had, honestly, with a fan. Yeah. And well, she I mean, was like, every time I get a chance to come watch you, I'm gonna come watch you now because I get to relive a little bit of my dad when I watch you pitch. That's incredible. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's, that's movie like, stuff. Wow. Yeah. It was it was super cool. I mean, I sat there and talked to her for an hour and a half after the game. Yeah, well, it I mean, was, it's like, it it's, awesome. <laughs> I mean, that that's the sort of thing where it feels like she walked out of the corn at the Field of Dreams right. place. You know, it's a very, <laughs> yeah. it's a very like cinematic and like, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, otherworldly oh, kind of oh, connection man. to have. And it's sort of, it's one of those things that makes you like believe in more, you know, it's like, it's for a sure. Weird, yeah. 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 That, that's crazy, man. Super cool. But that, that was, that was the. That was the most touching, touching fan experience I've ever had for sure. That's perfect. That's really cool. Uh, cool, Adam. You got anything? Anything else before we let? No, you I think I, I don't. I don't think we're gonna find a better uh, note to end it on than that, than that story. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, he's a man of the people. You heard it here first. Ethan Roberts is not gonna big league us once he gets to the. He's still gonna, <laughs> he's still gonna respond need. to our DMs. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I would very much respect it if we were the only two people that Ethan did big league <laughs> from here on out. You have permission just for fun. If you need to get it out of your system, uh, uh, <laughs> that works for us. I, if 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 my if by some chance I get up there, I'll send you guys both in Jersey for sure. Oh man, oh, that's uh, and he, he I I hate to do it. Ethan maybe maybe challenging and possibly taking over Justin Steele's uh, current status as uh, top friend of the show. Steele's got two appearances, <laughs> but, uh, uh -oh. but that's a pretty good offer. Uh, well, th thanks so much for for joining us, Ethan. Yeah, we're we're so excited to see you keep moving up and hopefully get to Chicago. Uh, do you want to tell people where they can like find you on social media or anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, on Twitter, my handle is Ethan XXVI. Um, anything you guys need. If you want me to do anything for you, um, sign a card for you, send me a card, whatever, just reach out to me. I, I think my only I'm request is the next the next save that you uh, convert. We're going to need three full spins afterwards. <laughs> one, and, one and a half's not cutting it. <laughs> what about a cartwheel? No, oh, man. Really. Even, uh, even better. Get that on Pitching no, Ninja. Kidding. Okay. <laughs> That'd be all over it, Go straight to Simone Biles on this? Yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. No, I'll see what I can do. We'll all right. Perfect. Thanks so much. <laughs> thanks so much you, for joining us, Ethan. Good yeah, luck the man. rest of the way. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys. Big thanks to Ethan Roberts for joining us on the podcast today. Fun guy. And you can go follow him on Twitter at EthanXXVI, rocking some Super Bowl-like Roman numerals there to beat the character count. Excellent work. Uh, and we've got at Ethan Roberts 26 on Instagram. So go follow Ethan and follow us at AwayGamesPod on Twitter and Instagram. And use the promo code AwayGames to get your 20% off all Manscaped products and your free shipping. It helps keep our podcast going, too. So so thanks for doing that. Thanks for listening to Ethan Roberts. Go follow him. Go Cubs.